When I think of this idea of friendship and having someone who's going to be there for me, I'm drawn to the story of, of David and Jonathan. That uh, these two individuals became very close friends. Um, Jonathan being the the son of King Saul, and David being one who begins to rise ranks and earns favor even in Saul's eyes and also in Jonathan's eyes. But eventually, as we know, David is anointed king, and and because of that, and and because of uh, David's victories, uh, Saul begins to get jealous of David, and that he begins to plot to to kill him. And David has this interaction with Jonathan and asking, what has he done? That I don't know what I've done. I don't know what I've done to sin against you or your family. And why is your father trying to kill me? And Jonathan tells him, no, my father is not going to kill you. You are not going to die. He doesn't do anything big or small without running it past me or letting me know uh, about it. And so Jonathan and David developed this, this plan uh, to see if Saul was really trying to go after uh, David. And it has to do with shooting these arrows uh, and, and a servant and what was he was going to say. And at the end of 1 Samuel chapter 20, uh, we see uh, the response. We see that uh, Jonathan does find out that Saul is trying to kill David. And so he sends the message and gets the message across uh, to David through this plan that they came up with. And then this is their interaction. And these words are are encouraging uh, when it think of a, a friend who's going to be there, who's going to risk a reputation, maybe even with a family member, uh, but to let them know that they care about you, that they're there for you no matter what, and that they want to see you succeed. And so in 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse 42, it says, Jonathan then said to David, go in the assurance the two of us pledged the name of the Lord. When we said, the Lord will be a witness between you and me and between my offspring and your offspring forever. Then David left and Jonathan went to the city. That even though they knew they were no longer going to be able to see each other, that this friendship that had developed, this adoration for one another, um, this love for one another, was going to be the thing that continued to, to bind their families together uh, forever. And I don't know if you have a friend like that. Um, and honestly, I don't know. If I can say I have one that's completely like that. But I do value the friendships that I have and that I've been able to develop over the last uh, few years, especially with my buddies Chris and Chris, that we will look out for one another, we'll speak hard truths to one another, that uh, we will encourage each other and support one another's families, and that we view uh, each other's family as our own family and that we hope that that tradition would continue to carry on uh, with our kids. That our kids would build these relationships and these friendships to where that they would just continue to see each other uh, as family and to look out for one another. And so my, my encouragement for you is to look at the relationships, the friendships that you have that are more than just your normal acquaintance or your normal friend and continue to invest in those relationships because they are the relationships uh, that bring about community. Uh, knowing what it looks like to live together, uh, to encourage one another, support one another, to have each other's back in good times and in bad. And so let's look for those types of relationships, those types of friendships, to where that we can look back and say that this was a, a Jonathan in my life someone who is always there for me, looking out for me, no matter what the cost may be. So my prayer is that you would be able to have one of those friendships as well.